My name is Zaldi. I'm a fashion and costume designer, and my studio and I created this special look for RuPaul at Madame Tussauds. I was really excited to get the call from Madame Tussauds. I love anything that has a sort of permanence. To do this one in the UK where drag race has become so huge in the UK, I just thought uh, it would be really exciting to be a part of this one. In the work that I do with Rue, it's really special and iconic because each piece is built specifically for a moment. That sort of lends itself to permanence um, and not sort of like a disposable, I'm borrowing a dress, I'm going to put it on, and it doesn't actually have any real warmth or resonance with the person, it just looks really good. This one being created for Rue and for Tussauds for this specific room, it's full of all the emotions and uh, the joy and the happiness that comes when we make these things for Rue. I met Rue early in the Club Kid era, you know, so I guess it was in the 80s. We just met at, out at a nightclub, you know. And I was, I just said, you know, like, oh wow, you're RuPaul. I was like, you wore that same outfit yesterday. <laughs> and she was just like, and she said, when it works, it always works. And I was, I've always remembered that. My boyfriend at the time, Matthew Anderson, who created the makeup and the hair looks for Rue in the beginning. Um, and Rue was like, oh, will you guys be my um, stylist? You know, and like, style me, I'm, I'm getting this record deal. And we weren't really sure what that, you know, like we're like, oh God, we're only making clothes for ourselves. <laughs> so like, I, we didn't know, but then we were just like, well, let's do this. You know, like, let's have fun and like see where it goes. And then it just like, hasn't stopped since then. Like, I don't even know what year Supermodel is, but I think it's gonna be 93. And uh, so I've been working with Rue for almost 30, no, 30 years. When I start a project, um, it can vary, just depending on what is needed. With the Tussauds one, you know, like you're, you think like, oh wow, this isn't Rue the f in the flesh. So, wow, we don't have to have a corset on, we don't have to have any of these things on. But the more I started looking at it, and the more I started thinking of like where we've gone with Rue and the thousands of dresses we've made uh, for the show, I was like, I think it should be a true style of what and how we produce Rue's costumes for the show. So it has the big zipper in the back, it, it's built with stretch in it underneath. You know, we did everything. I wanted to be a real representation of what most people know RuPaul wearing, which is this. So with this one, I felt, let's cover it and cover every part that we would with Rue. Let's make it exactly this glamorous statement that Rue would want to wear. Like, let's make it big. And I liked, you know, like, we have so much free reign with when we work with Rue. We can do whatever we want. But I do like a little parameters. And so like Tussauds had a little parameter of like wanting to reference British fashion or British Britishness. When I started doing my research on the gown, of course, you know, I looked into British history, uh, the monarchy, I looked into British fashion, but then, I, you know, I look into my favorite designers that I think really define modern British fashion. So I was looking at Vivian Westwood, I was looking at John Galliano, definitely the ones that are really the exuberant sort of entertainer. Um, designers and uh, something about the scale. They all know how to achieve a scale on a human body that's sort of like larger than life. So definitely Westwood is in there, especially uh, looking at her like couture gowns that she used to do, huge, beautiful, beautiful pieces. You know, when I think about drag culture and where it is now, and then I start to think about in the late 80s when I was in New York, I remember the different attitudes and um, of the different types of gay people. There, were, there was like the trans, the leather boys, the Chelsea boys, like, and the drag queens, and they sort of just didn't mix. And I just never really kind of understood what that was all about. but. That's kind of how it was in the 80s. And like when it started to mix in the 90s, it was a beautiful thing. When I look at, think about those times and I think about how huge drag is. I mean, drag is a household phenomenon. And um, I didn't think back then 
it was going to go there. I knew that when I met Rue and started working with Rue, that Rue was a very political-minded artist and that whatever Rue was going to do was going to sort of change the course. But I had no, I mean, I thought Rue walking in a Versace show or <laughs> singing with Elton John was the height of dragdom. And it's like, what Rue has brought to the world in drag um, is truly remarkable and absolutely, I don't think any of us would have imagined it would be this big or important. When you're creating designs for Rue, there are definitely rules that we always follow. Um, number one, has to have the tiniest waist possible. Like, belt it, cinch it, don't blouse it, just make it tiny. Number two, make the legs as long as possible. There's the heels and the hair, it's like, well, she's well over seven feet tall, but still, try and make it as long as possible. And then number three, it's just color. Sometimes we do black and white, but color. It's like Rue loves color, vibrant color, and just outrageous, you know? Iconic, outrageous, make it work. The best thing uh, that I find about having had such a long relationship with Rue and have been designing for Rue for like 30 years now, is that you just don't remember everything. We film the shows a year in advance. So by the time they're airing, we're already working on next year's show. It's just like fashion. And so like, it happens all the time where I'm in an interview and they're like, tell me your favorite look from this season. And I'm just like, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. There's too many shows. London style, I think um, it's so unique. It really has its own look, I think. Since like, I guess the youth movements, you know, since Mary Quant, um, since that time, like they really started to really create. I mean, I think once that happened with the youth energy, it's like British fashion left Hardy Amy's, it left the House of Worth, left that all behind. And it was really about defining the future. And I feel like what I love about British designs that I've always seen and the people that I love is they have a love and passion for history not only their own, but it really comes out in a, such a unique and modern way. And it still feels like when it's a ball gown, you're gonna wear it, you can wear that ball gown on the street, which is not like an Oscar de la Ronta gown. And you know, it's like, these are UK British designs and they just have that attitude built in that feels sort of punk, no matter if it's punk or not, it just has that feeling that you could turn it into something uh, relevant for your life. So when I started working on this gown, I knew the color that I wanted to do. Uh, it definitely was this beautiful, iconic blue that I makes me think of Queen Elizabeth and about a beautiful gown that I saw from a Dior collection by John Galliano. One of my designers, Jared, was working with this fabric and I was like, oh, that's a pretty fabric. And we started like pinning it up on the form and you know, it was destined for RuPaul's Drag Race UK. And the more we started like working and I started like getting into the royal orders and the sashes, and the design of the gown, I was like, oh, I want the gown to have like a sash or something. You know, and I walk into the room and it's on the form. Like Jared has already like intuitively put this thing together and it's starting to take shape. And I was like, wait, this is the gown for Tussauds. We're taking it away from Drag Race. And now we're just gonna build on this gown and create a beautiful train, more details, and just like create this one as a museum piece. So then when I saw the sash, it started to make me think about the royal orders, and when I learned that royal orders are lady medals that the queen gives out to special people, um, I thought it would be really beautiful to like put on the sash and create Rue royal orders with the three most, I think, important women in Rue's life, Oprah Winfrey and uh, Diana Ross and Michelle Visage. Another one of my big inspirations was what I thought um, is the most iconic piece of jewelry ever worn by a British monarch is the bee that Anne Boleyn wore with three pearls. I was like, I've always known about it when I was a kid. I just didn't really know that that was Anne Boleyn wearing this necklace. And I thought, as I was looking at the RuPaul logo, I was like, R, B, R, B. Let's like merge these. Let's put, take that Ru R, add a serif, and like, let's create earrings and not a necklace because Rue doesn't like to wear necklaces normally, um, but loves big earrings. So then I created 
this earring, which at first I was gonna do in a much more complicated way. And I had a sample cut in mirror and somehow the mirror just seemed to work for me. And I went that way instead. I think that how you present yourself to the world, whether it's with fashion or with style, it's really the highest form of self-expression that you could present to the world uh, without saying anything.